bless you saints i uh, want to share with you some things that the lord put in my heart today and uh, share a couple of things that that we're seeing in the news and so i'm going to start with um second corinthians 5 5 7 and 5 7 talks about for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor, we labor, we strive that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, that we may be accepted of the Lord. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. And so we keep front and center the understanding that one day we're going to appear and stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to have to give an account of the things that we've done on this earth, whether they were good or they were bad. And I've shared before a very terrifying vision that the Lord gave me of the judgment seat in which he was very stern and it was very terrifying to see the Lord passing judgment. You know, the Lord told us in Matthew 10, 33, but whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. And um, in Second Timothy 2.12, it says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. The very scripture of John 3.16 that we know so well. It tells us that, um, well, in John 3.3 it tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We have to be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Praise you, Lord. Um, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave, up, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 315 that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life praise to you heavenly father he that believes on him is not condemned but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god and this is the condemnation that the light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Praise you, Heavenly Father. We see that in 2 Thessalonians, praise you, Lord. The Lord is warning us to not be deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And so... And we see that um, 
And then that uh, two eight it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, and they perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved because and the Lord tells us in Hosea 4 6 my people perish for lack of knowledge not because they don't have the knowledge but but because we reject it so because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause because they reject the truth God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness the one that we have to fear is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord tells us in Matthew 10, 26, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He is the only one that we have to fear, not man. He is the only one with the power to, to, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He is the one that we have to fear. And so this was the, these are, were the things the Lord was passing judgment against those that uh, 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 rejected the truth and for the, uh, the many reasons that it tells us in the word that were not obedient and according to their works the Lord was judging them and many were being told depart from me I never knew you many were being cast into hell and so knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade man. So the point I'm trying to make is that we keep front and center the fact that one day we're all going to give an account for the things that we have done on this earth. Praise you, Heavenly Father. I'm going somewhere with this. The Lord also showed me, and I've shared before, uh, two very powerful experiences of hell and in one of them I was allowed to see the lake of fire I was allowed to see the lake of fire and I was allowed to hear the most horrifying screams of the dead the screams of those that are in hell the screams of desperation, of pain, of agony, and, and of those that are in hell. And the sound was so unbearable that just, just, just the sound of the screams alone would drive anybody crazy. And they have to endure that for eternity. I was allowed to see the lake of fire. It tells us in the word. Praise you, Father. Revelations uh, 19.20 says, The beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which, were, which he deceived them. He deceived the world that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him and that sat upon the horse, which sword proceed out of his mouth, out of the mouth of Jesus. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelations 20.10 Thank you, Father. And they went up... Uh, uh, 2010 sorry and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever revelations 2011 and i saw a great 
white throne and him that sat on it from those from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the dead and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and I was allowed to see the lake of fire people in the lake of fire suffering and being tormented I was allowed to see uh, uh, that there were uh, like scrolls like the like the word tells us books with names with people's names written on them that were in the book of life and those that were not written on them and I also had another uh, vision to where I was physically falling in the pit of hell I myself was physically falling in the pit of hell I could see uh, just light around me and and it, I did not see Jesus I just saw light around me holding me up but I was falling as I was being held up except the there were others that were falling beside me and they were going faster and I was allowed to feel the flames of heat burning my body I was allowed to feel the heat uh, uh, burning my arms and and burning my body I was allowed to feel that horror of of not being able to do anything about it and just falling and there was and that was it there was no more uh, uh, no going back that was it there was just um, that was it for that for 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 the souls that are falling that is it they're not coming back there is no second chance there is only regrets there is no um you know uh, people telling you at that time uh, uh, to repent and coming to you and trying to grab you out of the flames of fire it's over the lord passed judgment and the soul is falling into the pit of hell and so I was allowed to feel that and see the desperation and horror in the faces of people. For, for the Lord wanted me to share this with, with his people. The Lord said, share it with my people. For many of my very people do not believe in hell. Many do not believe that there is a hell. And, and so many are living a life of sin. And, and, and not really living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so many are falling even right now. And so I bring this up for, for it's a last call for many out, out there. It's a last call for many out there. It's, it's appointed for man uh, wants to die and then the judgment. That's Hebrew, Hebrews 9.27. The Lord also tells us, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We are to be in fear of the Lord, in awe of the Lord, in reverence of the Lord, in worship of the Lord, and in trembling of him before his word. And so, um, as we are seeing that, that, um, this is a call for many out there. Thank you, Jesus. This is a call for many of you out there that are have walked away from the Lord. And the Lord is calling you. If you're feeling that stirring up in your heart for the Lord is calling you. That's the Holy Spirit touching your heart. Do not resist Him. Just repent. Repent right now and turn your back. You turn your life back to the Lord, to your first love. And He will forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to, to, to save your soul and, and to cover you in his blood. And he will forgive you. 
praise you, wonderful Jesus. And so I'm going somewhere with this that um, also we're seeing in, in Revelations 13. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The Lord warned us that the beast system would be given a mouth, a mouth beast. He's been given a mouth to speak, speaking great things and blasphemies, blaspheming the Lord. And power was given unto him to continue 42 and 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy. The point I'm making is he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. And his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell relations 18 8 i mean forgive me 13 8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him the beast whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Those that are not written in the Lamb's book of life will go to hell, will face that, that, that eternal hell fire judgment and torment. And so it's a final call for many. It's a final call for those of you out there that are not walking with the Lord. It's a call for you to come back to your first love and to come to his, into his arms and be saved. And um, why I'm making this point is because we are seeing the name of the Lord being blasphemed like never before. Persecution is coming, saints. Persecution like the world's never seen is coming. And as it tells us in the world, in the word, that it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. We are seeing how this nation is just uh, spiraling down into total uh, civil war. It's going to end up in civil war. We're seeing how how uh, uh, the, the, the total... Um, Thank you, wonderful Father. Uh, disobedience, rebellion against the Lord is, is, is uh, at war with God. And so we also seen this week how many out in the uh, media are blaspheming the Lord. And so we're seeing the name of the Lord Jesus Christ being blasphemed. And we have to fear the Lord. This nation no longer fears the Lord. And this is, this is a call for, for many out, out there. We pray for these men. We pray for those souls that are blaspheming the Lord. And coming against and, and warring with God. And we pray for their souls to turn back for the Holy Spirit to turn their hearts to back to the Lord, that the Lord, that they will repent and that the Lord will forgive them. They will, that if they repent, the Lord will forgive them. But once that day comes to, to, to where, as I said before, it's accounted for man once to die and then the judgment. That's it. That is it. If, if that soul didn't repent and didn't get saved didn't come to the lord their eternal judgment is hell fire and so we pray for them for them to come back but the lord is very clear in his word thank you heavenly father <laughs> Praise you, Lord. The Lord is very clear in his word in Revelations uh, 14. Revelations 14, 9, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, 
The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Whosoever worships the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord. Keeping the commandments of God and, and the faith of Jesus Christ, uh, whosoever shall endure until the end shall be saved, it tells us in uh, Matthew 24. Uh, Revelations 14, 13, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, said the Spirit, that they may rest from the, their labors, and their works do follow them. So what we're seeing take place is, is serious, and is for us to, to um, repent and come back to the Lord. Praise you, Heavenly Father, for today we have a chance. Today we have a chance to come back to the Lord. Today we have a, a, a chance to, to repent and get our lives straight with the Lord, to get our hearts right with the Lord. Today we have a chance to serve Him, to honor Him, to fear Him. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Church. And if you will bear with me, because another one comes to mind as I am speaking. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It's in the book of First uh, John 2. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, one comes to mind right away. First John 2, 17. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. First John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he promised us, even eternal life. So I want to read, um, thank you, Lord, the fear of the Lord. This nation has no fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments, his praise endures forever. Psalm 111, 10, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, 29, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 2, 5. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And there's many others. They're spitting in his face, folks. They're spitting on the Lord Jesus Christ's face. But vengeance is of the Lord, as he tells us in his word. 
in second thessalonians i'm going to start with one three it says we are bound to thank god always for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith grows exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounds so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of god in your patience and faith and in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of god that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of god for which you also suffer seeing it is a righteous thing with god to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels hallelujah to the lamb of god second thessalonians 1 8 in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not god and that obey not the gospel of our lord jesus christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day second thessalonians 1 11, wherefore also we pray always for you that our god would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our lord jesus christ may be glorified in you and i glorify and exalt the name of the lord jesus christ hallowed be the name of the lord jesus christ i magnify your holy name that the name of the lord jesus christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our god and the lord jesus christ hallelujah to the lamb of god hallelujah to the lamb of god first john 4 6 we are of god he that knows god hears us he that is not of god hears not us whereby or hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error thank you heavenly father first john 4 10 actually 4 9 and this the love of god was manifested toward us that god has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him and this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins thank you lord another one that comes to mind colossians thank you father i'm going to read colossians 1 we give thanks to the god and father of our lord jesus christ praying always for you since we heard of your faith in christ jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven and is the hope that is laid up for all the saints that's laid up for us in heaven of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which has come to you and it has also and it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth as you also learned from Epaphras our dear fellow servant who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf who also declared to us your love in the spirit the preeminence of Christ Jesus for this reason, for Colossians 1 9, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have the redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation 
For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him, the Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, and for him, the Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father, that in him, the Lord Jesus Christ, all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Hallelujah! And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. And so we indeed continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel, the hope of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The eternal word, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word, John 1, 1. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the word, John 1, 14, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Lord. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. Thank you, Lord, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared them. Declare Him. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we need to lift this na nation up in, in prayer, in serious prayer and intercession and interceding for lost souls and, and speaking up, speaking up uh, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel and carrying it forth and, and witnessing to people. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I bless you. I love you until soon again, Lord willing, and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father.